So when we're talking about relativity, we know that time and distance uh, are, are altered by motion. What about momentum? We know that momentum is mass times velocity. Well, what's velocity? Velocity, you know, dx dt. We know that from physics one. Uh, well, uh, uh, let's let's take average velocity, uh, delta x over delta t. Well, really, it's the distance you travel divided by t naught, the proper time. Well, we know that uh, if we you know do uh, uh, velocity, okay, uh, delta x over delta t times delta t over delta t naught. So I just multiply delta t over delta t. Okay, now this is your traditional just regular velocity and this right here is going to be gamma, okay? Because we know that t is gamma t naught, okay? So that means that the velocity is really going to be gamma delta x delta t. Well, if you plug that in up here, then that that momentum is going to be gamma m delta x over delta t, or in other words, gamma mv, okay? And so uh, that would mean that momentum varies with velocity. So if you're going slow velocities, remember gamma is 1 divided by square root 1 minus v over c squared, okay? So at very low velocities, that's very close to 1. And so that means that momentum is just mv. Well, what's very low velocities? Well, 1 meter per second, 100 meter per second, 1,000 meters per second. I mean, those are all low velocities compared with the speed of light. And so momentum is just going to be mv. That's the approximation we've always been using, and, and that, that works just fine. And so momentum, though, remember, as you go to higher and higher velocities, then this means that the momentum is going to get much larger. So, uh, for example, there were, were instances in which subatomic particles, uh, just, you know, you know protons, can be going at such high velocity, they have the same momentum as a bullet. And so that's, that's an interesting sort of, of expansion to this. So work is changing in energy. Okay, remember that from earlier uh, in, in uh, Physics 1. So work is going to be change in energy. Work is the integral f dx. Well, f, momentum, we know is uh, dp dt dx. So let's figure out what is dp dt. dp dt is the derivative of momentum. Well, the momentum is going to be gamma mv. Well, that's going to be the derivative here of mv over square root 1 minus v squared over c squared. All right, so that means that when you do that derivative, dp dt is going to be equal to m dv dt, because the velocity is what can change here, uh, 1 minus uh, v squared over c squared to the 3 halves. Okay. So work, which is the change in energy, is integral 0 up to some time t m dv dt v dt divided by 1 minus v squared over c squared to the 3 halves. Okay, the m factors out. So 
the work is going to be m integral 0 to t of um, dv. Okay, because uh, uh, right, uh, uh, or the v dv divided by 1 minus v squared over c squared to the 3 halves. Okay, well, we do this integral, and what we find is that uh, by doing this integral, uh, we come up with um, essentially um, we come up with uh, after plugging in again the C we got we got actually have to figure this out because we look at it we say well, wait a minute we got a problem here um, in that we got a V up here we got a V over C so so if we make a substitution here of U and say that U equals uh, V over C and so DU equals uh, dv over c. We've got to multiply by c here. We've got a c at the top. we got a c here and a c here. Okay, uh, so we uh, divide by c. So this ends up being uh, mc squared in front. And so we do the integral, and what we come up with is that we get... Uh, uh, doing uh, the, the integral, I'm not going to do all the steps here because uh, we're a little bit short of time, you get mc squared times 1 over square root of 1 minus v over c squared minus 1. Okay, or in other words, what we get is uh, that the work, which is the change in energy, is gamma mc squared minus mc squared. Okay. Now, what do we got here? This is the change in energy. Okay. So the change in energy is going to be the change in kinetic energy because we started at rest and we got up to some final velocity. So that would suggest that the initial kinetic energy was zero. So the kinetic energy is going to be equal to gamma mc squared minus mc squared. Okay, now that means that we can find that kinetic energy plus mc squared is going to be equal to gamma mc squared. This is going to be equal to E. Okay, that's the energy right here. So that's the energy, the total energy. So that's the total energy that something has is that. Okay. So E equals gamma mc squared, okay? So that's going to be, like I said, K plus mc squared. So mc squared, the kinetic energy here, uh, is going to be the energy of the motion, but we find the total energy is going to be the kinetic energy plus this quantity mc squared. That suggests if it's sitting still, it actually has energy just from sitting still. So the E equals, E naught equals mc squared. This is what we call the rest energy. Now, if it's in motion, then this is going to be gamma mc squared. It's going to be the total energy. Now notice, if it's in motion, momentum is going to be gamma times mv. This is as if the m, the mass when it's in motion equals gamma m. We often put m naught to indicate this is the rest mass. So the mass of something is equal to gamma m naught, m naught being the rest mass. Okay, so what does that mean? It means that the faster you go, the more mass that something has. And so likewise, if you were to go the speed of light, you would have basically the the uh, rest mass divided by zero. Now the only way that's defined would be if the rest mass is zero. 
that would mean once again that that the only thing that can go the speed of light is something that has no rest mass. Well, if it has no rest mass, it cannot go anything but the speed of light. So photons have no rest mass, they go the speed of light. Gravitons, particles that carry the gravitational energy, have no rest mass, they go the speed of light. But the particles that carry the strong force or the weak force actually have mass, therefore they cannot go the speed of light, and that limits the distance over which those forces can act to very short range. We sometimes call the strong force and the weak force the strong nuclear force, the weak nuclear force because of that. So now we have three new equations to worry about. We have momentum equals gamma mv, where this really should be m naught v. We have that the energy equals gamma uh, m naught c squared, or uh, um, again, this would be gamma mc squared, okay? And so uh, that, that means that e naught, the rest mass, equals m naught c squared. So uh, here we have uh, a couple more relationships right here. You also know that m, the mass, looks like gamma times m naught.